Hey guys, today we're back with another Farms Review. And today on the channel we'll be reviewing the Radian Mod 1. Stay tuned for this one. <laughs> All right, guys, we're back. Once again, today on the channel, we'll be reviewing the Radian Mod 1. This is a 14 and a half inch with a pin and welded key mold flash hider on the end of it, so it is uh, not an NFA weapon. It is technically a 16 inch barrel. So this is the rifle configuration as set up. Uh, that being said, before we get into the review though today, I'd like to let you all know about our sponsors. Uh, first sponsor of the video will be Actually, Radian on this one. Radian did uh, send us this entire uh, rifle to review for you all. A little bit of backstory on that. We did melt down the Radian Mod 1 upper uh, 14 and a half inch. Uh, we got in contact with Radian and I was like, hey, here's a video. Uh, as you can tell, we never pull no punches left, right, up, or down. Uh, is there any way that you could maybe uh, redo our upper or at least put a new barrel in? They was like, we'll do you one even better we'll send you a full rifle as long as you uh, review it and give your honest opinion. And I said, you know what, that sounds like a pretty good deal to me, so that's what we've done. Uh, I sent my upper back, they put a new barrel in it and uh, re coated everything, put a new lower, or a lower in general on it. This one's not fully automatic, uh, but uh, put a new lower on it and uh, sent it back to us and here we are. So as you all know right now, this is actually the uh, holder for number one place still in our meltdown segment. But before we get any further though, once again, a very special thank you to Radium for sending us this rifle. The next sponsor on the list today will be Optics Force. Uh, Optics Force did send us the EOTech EXPS 3-0 and the EOTech G45 five times flip to side magnifier for us to use in this review today. So once again, uh, if you'd like to check out uh, Optics Force, you can use the link in the description below and it'll take you straight to their website. Uh, they have everything that you would need for a uh, new up-to-date uh, magnifiers, EOTechs, or any type of other optic that you can find on the market today. So once again, a very special thank you to Optics Force. If you'd like to support the channel, whenever you click the link in the description below and you buy something on our website, a little bit of it will come back to us. So once again, if you'd like to support us, that's one good way to do so. Our last and final sponsor in today's video is Optics Planet. We did use a 55 grain Winchester M193 for our review today, and that's what we shot all across the board with this rifle here. So once again, a very special thank you to Optics Planet. If you'd like to use the code GWEBB, G -W -E -B -B, it will take 7% off of your entire order, and you can use the link in the description below, and it'll take you straight to their website. So once again, a very special thank you to Optics Planet for the ammunition used in today's video. All right, guys, so Radian Mod 1, let's go ahead and jump into it. Starting tip to butt, we do have a flash hider here on front, a three-pronged flash hider, which is the dead hour chemo adapter. Uh, we did shoot this suppressed as well for the video today. Moving on back from there, we do have a M-Lock rail with Picatinny on top. You have the M-Lock on the three, six, and nine position and Picatinny in the 12 uh, clock position. So it's interesting, comes all the way out to the front. As you can see here in the top, there is also uh, some cuts in the actual uh, rail to keep it as lightweight as possible. We do have a uh, Magpul foregrip here on the front of it or vertical grip, however you wanna look at it. EOTech EXPS 3-0, one of my favorite optics on the market. Uh, EOTech G45 flip to side magnifier, one of my favorite magnifiers on the market. Going on back here, we do have the Radian um, charging handle. This is the suppressor uh, edition one, the one that is actually cut with uh, their suppressor hose to keep that uh, gas as far away from your face as physically possible. It's actually called the Radian Raptor SD. Let's go ahead and close that up. You do have a 45 degree throw for safe and uh, fire. Moving on down from there, you do have the ADAC system. Uh, the ADAC system, we'll talk a little bit about more here in a minute, but this is a fully ambidextrous uh, lower. So if you are left, right-handed, it doesn't matter. You can run this gun just as best as if it was built just for you. Like I said, we'll talk about that here in a second because it's a big talking point of this rifle. You do have a Magpul dust cover on it that is polymer. Have a radian force forward assist have a radian trigger um, if i had to say this is one con i have found about this gun is the trigger single action is killer or not single action but the actual trigger pull is killer so let's go ahead and go set the trigger together barely anything at all let up the let up on it is okay 
but it ha is not positive at all. Like you have to release your finger for that trigger to reset. If there was a way that we could change it to where it would have a little bit more positive uh, reset, I would rather have that than how soft it is. But it is a great uh, single action trigger or a single stage trigger, my bad. I've been reviewing some revolvers lately. But anyway, um, as you can see though, very short reset, very short travel as well but I would just rather have it be a little bit more tactile and a little bit more forward pushing whenever it comes to that reset, especially on them quicker transitions because you can shoot this gun still pretty quick, but it's just not gonna push your finger off there at all. You have to physically remove your finger for that trigger to reset. Um, you have a very, very flared magwell. have a full built-in trigger guard. You have a magpul uh, grip here, the K2, if I'm not mistaken. You have a magpul stock as well six position and a, a buffer tube here that is also uh, dremeled out a little bit. As you can see, just to keep uh, as much weight down as possible. This is a little bit heavier of a gun. It can range from six to eight ounces, depending on your setup. Uh, this one here, like I said, it's a little bit heavier of a gun, but you still have a full stainless steel barrel in it that is a mid weight and can hold up very well as you all have seen in the review, or in the meltdown review. Let's go ahead and get to a few specifications on this Radiant here. Uh, we're going to cover these as quick as possible. Uh, if you all would like to check out more of this, you can get on Radiant's website and Radiant 1 on 1. Uh, design philosophy behind the Radiant Mob 1 is simple. Use the highest quality raw materials, most precise CNC machining equipment, and the best components available to create a weapon that seamlessly blends form and function. Beyond quality and aesthetics, the Radium Mod 1 features fully ambidextrous controls, adding much needed utility for both left and right hand shooters. Every Mod 1 is assembled by one hand at one time by a trained gunsmith who inspects, tests, cleans the weapon to personally guarantee the most rigid quality standards. No detail has gone overlooked, which is why the Radium Mod 1, like every Radium product, is guaranteed for life. Rifle specifications is designed and manufactured in US of A. Upper receiver, lower receiver, hand guard, Cerakoted together for a perfect match. As you can tell, that's 100% the truth. This black is exactly the same up, down, left, and right. So you won't have 50 shades of gray, 50 shades of FDE, 50 shades of black. It's all one shade of black, so I love that. Your upper receiver specification, sub MOA, accuracy guarantee with Black Hills match grade ammunition. Billet machine uh, 775 T6 upper receiver with M4 feed ramps, proprietary uh, extended aluminum handguard with Magpul M lock modular mounting system and integration upper handguard stainless steel anti rotation pin, match grade 416R stainless steel barrel with polished crown and feed ramps, chambered 223 wild 556 NATO 300 blackout threaded 1.5 by 28 for 223 or 5 eighths by 24 for 300 blackout. Enhanced black nitrate M16 bolt carrier group, lightweight forward assist, a direct impingement gas system, and your 14 to 5 and 16 inches a mid length system. Lower receiver specifications billet machine 775 T6 lower receiver with integral trigger guard and flared magazine well, ADAC ambidextrous dual action control right side bolt hold open feature, ambidextrous right and left side magazine and bolt release buttons. Radiant Talon modular ambidextrous 45 90 degree safety lever, Radiant Vertex trigger, six position mil spec receiver extension with QD M plate and H2 carbine buffer, Magpul pistol grip and classical stock. All right guys, that is a mouthful, but there is a lot of information to cover there, which we did cover a decent amount uh, before we actually read that, but I like to cover every bit of specifications anytime we get the chance to. So let's go ahead and go over this lower, which is what makes this pretty uh, pretty special if I do say so myself. So guys, the way that you operate the Radium Mob 1 is pretty much just like any other AR-15, but there is a few different uh, things that you can do with this gun that is very interesting. Number one being the ability to lock back the bolt with your right hand if you're a right hand shooter. So all you have to do is press in the mag release and it will automatically hold the, back, the bolt open. That's all I've done right there was hold the mag release down, pull a, a charging handle back, and the bolt is held open. Now, if I need to release the bolt, uh, the bolt carrier group with my right hand, all I have to do is take my index finger, hit right there, and it will release. So, say for instance, you're shooting, pow, 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 malfunction. You don't go to your sidearm like you're normally taught, because, for instance, you don't have a sidearm on you, and you need to fix that malfunction. All you have to do 
is holding that mag release and it will lock the bolt back whenever you charge your charging handle. So not only will that more than likely release your magazine where you can actually look in there, fix malfunction, do whatever else, load a new mag in. But now if I need to, load a new mag in, bolt release and there we go. That simple. So this truly is one of my favorite lowers on the market. That being said, it's one of the most expensive ones as well, but it is beautiful. Uh, if you all have paid attention to it as well, I've seen this in another review that uh, the lower is actually made almost exactly like a Magpul magazine for some reason, I don't know, but it is interesting. Uh, that being said though, guys, one of the most interesting lowers on the market, this is the only one to my knowledge that I know of that you can lock the bolt back by hitting the magazine release. Like I said, you also have a separate uh, function for the bolt release and also as well if you still want uh, to use your paddle release over here you still can let's go ahead and hang that open which we did with one hand here and if I need to insert a magazine I can still decompress it and it is a large paddle here so we don't have to have no problem about missing it either one you want to do I train with both because my uh, rifle I have that I use for duty uh, it also uh, is ambidextrous now but at one point I didn't and every single rifle I'd had to that point, uh, whenever it comes to duty use and how many rounds I shot through it, uh, it did not have an ambidextrous feature to it. So I'm still pretty normal uh, use with the paddle, but this is something to get used to that I do like. You also have a magazine release on the left-hand side as well. So if you're left-handed, you can still decompress the magazine and uh, be able to eject it with your left hand. So getting to my initial thoughts on how well this gun shoots. It shoots like a true dream. Uh, this is probably one of, if not the most less recoiling rifle I've ever shot in my life. So this 14.5, you would think it would be a little bit more snappier than say a 16 inch or more. Uh, but this 14.5 here, it's like it's gassed perfectly. We did shoot, uh, once again, M193 55 grain. Um, uh, 556 through it and it shot perfect with it. We did shoot as well some 223 here and there, uh, some Hornady 556 as well, just to see how good of groups we could get. And with full metal jacket, even bulk uh, ammunition through Winchester and uh, through Hornady, this gun was putting rounds inside of rounds, especially at 50 yards, which is, uh, I wouldn't say it's hard to do, but at the same time, as precise as shooting as we was getting with this with that five times magnifier, uh, it was blowing my mind, especially with how well the gun was functioning while we was doing it. Once again, while you're shooting this, you can get quick follow-up shots. You don't feel like there's any bit of recoil at all to the system. It is literally just like it's sitting there, which this gun is heavy, and that would kind of understandably why some of that recoil is less on this versus a little bit of a lighter of a gun, such as a Geisley um, Super Duty, something like that. But at the same time, though, uh, there was no recoil at all, and I mean, it really isn't that bad heavy. I mean, we did carry it around all day that day while we were shooting, and I never felt encumbered oh, once. Uh, the magazine always dropped pretty pretty free, I guess you would say, so we didn't have any problems with that. Uh, the grip on the actual upper here, it got hot uh, once or twice while we were shooting, but uh, it always felt pretty good to me. You can get a full wrap around it. I do have bigger hands, but as you can see here with that C-clamp, we have a good pull into it. Uh, the stock on this is something I would probably change, which once again, this comes with it from factory. I do like one with a little bit better of a cheek weld to it, especially on a full size rifle. If I was going for maybe a pistol or a SBR, uh, this right here would probably be better. But for a full size rifle, I do want something with a little bit better of a cheek guard on it. So if I could change two things on this gun right now, it would be the stock and the trigger. Once again, the trigger's fine for single action, but I, I just like one that has a little bit better reset to it. So I might switch that out with a uh, Geisley SSAEX or something like that. But for now, it's fine. Uh, we did shoot very quickly with it today, but I like something, like I said, with just a little bit better positive of a, uh, of a reset. Going on to how we shot suppressed. Um, we shot, I would say, 200 rounds suppressed. We did have one malfunction in suppressed. Uh, we was using the uh, Otter Creek Labs. Uh, polonium, the full size, and we didn't change anything in, internally. We didn't change out the buff or anything like that, so we're still using the H2. Uh, to be honest with you all, I've never shot that can to where we at least didn't have one malfunction within 100 rounds to 200 rounds of shooting. Uh, so once again, one round uh, mess up with 200 rounds, that's not bad, 
but once again, it's really not the gun's fault. That's just a super gassy can. It sounds too good to uh, not like it, but at the same time, uh, you do need to tune your gun just a tad bit to make it run absolutely perfect. But we shot this rifle here 1,000 rounds. Once again, 200 suppressed, 800 non-suppressed, and we had one malfunction that was more of the can. No ammunition malfunction, no rifle malfunction, and it absolutely shot like a dream. Uh, that being said, I couldn't talk any bit higher about this rifle here. Uh, if you're looking for a great rifle that is built by one person with one hand and looking over it with fine detail, and you get something to where you can sit there and stare at it at a wall and not find a single Im uh, imperfection anywhere on it, this rifle right here is hard to beat, guys. And something else is what well. Radian actually manufactures QCs, assembles, Cerakotes, the majority of the parts in the weapon themselves in one location in Redmond, Oregon. Uh, they also source all their parts and materials here in the USA. They make the upper, handguard, lower, gas block, charging handle, safety takedown pins, ADAC controls, handguard mounting hardware, EDC screws, um, turn and finish are their own barrels, QD, M plate, etc. I mean, they pretty much make almost everything on this rifle, which is very impressive. And you got to say, um, for it to have everything in it and still be American made and American built, um, it's just hard to beat and I really do support anything that's made in America. All right guys, one more serious note before we end uh, the actual review today. If you all are interested in the Radian Mod 1, what is my final thoughts on that? $3,000 is a lot of money, don't get me wrong. $3,000 is truly a lot of money. But once again, you have something here in your hands that will last you forever. There's no questions, if, ands, or buts about it. Once again, the barrel lasted more than anything else in our meltdowns, which I understand that's more of a entertainment aspect of it. That has to show you something. Uh, the stainless steel uh, aspect of it was one of, if not the most accurate uh, carbine or battle rifle setup that we've had so far. Uh, the gun feels great. It feels like it's a part of you. Even though it's a little bit heavier of a pistol or rifle, it's not that bad. Uh, the way that it just feels whenever you put it into your shoulder, you pull back on it and it has not a single bit of recoil at all. I'm just impressed with it all around. The design aspect of it, it's a beautiful design. It's something that you don't see on every single other mil-spec AR-15 out there. When you, put, when you put this in your hands, you know that it's Gucci. You know it's top tier. You know that it costed just as much as a very big down payment on a car. But that being said though, guys, you're paying for something here to where you can say, hey, I have my money here in my hands and I know where it went. Uh, you're not going to have to replace something on it after a few years because a piece broke, this something, that something, whatever else. They have a lifetime warranty on them and this is something that you can pass down to your children. If you have any questions or comments on the Radium Mod 1, please leave it in the comment section below and get back to you as soon as possible. But once again, I highly recommend this rifle here and if you're wanting to pick up something that's going to last you for the rest of your life and probably your children your, and your children's children just depending on how much they shoot, uh, pick this rifle up because you will not be disappointed. I can 100% honestly tell you that. Um, one of, if not the nicest rifle I currently have in my uh, full arsenal. So guys, once again, a very special thank you to Radium for sending us this rifle here today. Very special thank you to Optics Force for sending us the EOTech EXPS 3-0 and the G45 magnifier. Once again, a very special thank you to Optics Planet for the ammunition used in today's review. Once again, you can use the link in the description below for Optics Force or Optics Planet and get some ammunition or optics, depending on which one you want and depending on which one you're at. You can use the code GWEB, G-W-E-B-B, to get 7% off your entire order on Optics Planet. We don't have a code yet for Optics Force, but I will attempt to work on that for you all. So guys, once again, thank you all for viewing as always. Like and subscribe for more gun reviews, and I'll see you all in the next video. Ha, ha, ha.